Hello everybody, this is VG Rothko, and welcome to Loop Hero. This is a new RPG strategy card game with roguelike elements that I've been absolutely obsessed with over the past few days. I figured I would make a quick video to explain a little bit about the gameplay for those of you who might not be familiar with it and hopefully convince some of you to pick it up if it looks interesting. Currently this game has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam and I personally agree that it has been a overwhelmingly a positive experience to play. The gameplay loop involves you going on randomly generated expeditions. You start off the game in this overworld with just the level one campfire, but as you complete those expeditions, you'll gather resources, which will allow you to build new buildings, such as the supply depot, the forge, and so on. Each one of these new buildings will allow you to unlock new classes, new cards, and permanent upgrades to your heroes. Currently, I have two classes unlocked, the Warrior and the Rogue. And this is the set of cards that I have unlocked. Before every run, you're able to choose which cards you would like to include or exclude from your deck. Right now, I'm using a 14 card deck, but I could be using 15 if I chose to. And I've been running the Rogue class primarily, which has been giving me decent success in the first two chapters, though I have not yet completed the third chapter. But I figured I would just make a quick video here for you guys to see the gameplay, and I will explain a little bit more about what each card does and what the overall objective is. I'll select chapter one, which is the easiest chapter, just for the sake of this video. And hopefully if the game looks interesting, some of you might decide to give it a shot. So without further ado, let's dive into a expedition here. So, here we are in a fresh gameplay loop. I'll go ahead and equip these items, which I am given at the beginning, thanks to having built the Smith's Forge structure. I'll also place this arsenal card, which will allow me to unlock the necklace item slot for the Rogue class. I think I'll go ahead and actually place it right along this road here. I'll also start building this river, which allows me to get double benefit from any tile placed next to it. For now, I'll just continue along the loop here. These thicket cards provide me with a 2% attack boost, which will become 4% if it's next to a river card, such as this. I'm actually going to avoid placing any forest cards for the time being, and focus only on thickets, because the more structures and tiles you place, the faster this boss progress meter will increase. The goal of the game is to fill this progress meter by building tiles, and the defeating the boss once it spawns. I do have these sand dune cards which I would like to play but currently the river has not yet really been built so I'm just going to have these placed here in anticipation of increasing the length of my river. I think I will actually go ahead and place this forest tile right here which will allow me to build the blood grove and what the blood grove does is it will instantly kill any enemy with less than 15% HP 
and that includes the boss which will spawn in this tile. I will actually also go ahead and place a village guard. And I'll do it right here and fill in a wheat field there. And since I did draw a vampire's mansion, I will also play that right here. And what the vampire's mansion does is uh, it transforms any adjacent villages into Count's land. And it also spawns vampires in any adjacent tile. So as you can see, I'm facing a vampire in this particular battle. I think I'll also go ahead and place a grove tile here. A second village right here, which does spawn a bandit camp that is unfortunate that it spawned there. And we'll continue on our warpath here. The bandit camp will spawn bandits every few days. I would like to get rid of that with a oblivion card because that is where I want to place my smith's forge once I draw it. So the rogue class does not pick up items from any enemies that you kill. You only get items once per loop at the camp. And for now, I think I'm just going to take the highest base stats that I can. There really isn't much else to do other than take these really basic items for the time being. We'll take those items and continue on our way, killing vampires and slimes as we go. I'm avoiding placing these desert and forest tiles. The benefit they provide is much less than the equivalent sand dunes and thicket cards, and I would rather increase the boss meter with the more valuable thickets and sand dunes rather than the less valuable forests and deserts. This grove tile spawns a rat wolf every once in a while and it will also allow me to place another blood grove right there should I draw one. What I would ideally like is a oblivion card right now uh, because that would allow me to take care of this bandit camp. So when you pass through the village cards, they spawn a quest boss, like that slime that you just saw spawn. Defeating the quest boss will give you a boost in experience points, and they'll also provide you with a, crest, a quest reward the next time you pass through the village that gave you the quest. And I did also level up right there. This is the quest boss slime I was talking about. And then with that level up, I received Fuss and Shield of Faith. Both of these are quite nice, but the perk that you really want to get as the rogue is picky. So we'll choose this to re-roll and hope we get it. Unfortunate, we really would have liked to get the picky perk there. The picky perk decreases the number of items you receive every loop, but increases their quality quite significantly. Uh, in my case, I think what I'll do is choose the Awakened Fragment just for the chance of getting more resources out of this run. But the picky perk that I keep talking about, that truly is one of the best perks in the entire game in my opinion. Um, we're going to go ahead and lose a couple of magic HP for these substats and then gain some attack. I think I will... It's only one less damage, but I'll keep those substats. And then the armor. I think I will go for just the counter percent for now, but 
really in the long run what I want to be building is attack speed for this particular run. So that is what we will aim for is attack speed. And we'll continue stacking these sand dunes. That's nice that we got these oblivion cards so I will destroy this bandit camp right there. And I think I'll also destroy this forest. And when you remove the forest, this blood grove becomes a hungry grove. So now at 20% HP, the boss will immediately die rather than 15% HP. And we completed that quest. We'll get some items when we reach the village a second time. And then I'm going to continue the sand dunes down to here. It's the river. I really haven't gotten lucky with any river cars, but it's going to continue all the way down here, then over two, and then all the way up. So we just continue on our loops here and hope for some good card drops from these enemies. These slimes are usually pretty good about dropping a lot of cards. We really have not been lucky with our rivers at all here. I also haven't received a single Smith's Forge yet. Hopefully we'll get one of those cards shortly. We'll face our last bandit. As you see, I got a item as a quest reward for killing that slime earlier. And that will happen every loop. And we'll also face off against these guys. They are quite tough for my current power level, which is unfortunate. We're drinking our potions here. I've already drunk three of them. But hopefully we complete this fight and start getting some much nicer items. So we did get our Smith's Forge. I'm going to place this right here. And what this does is every time I pass through one of these blue squares, I sacrifice two items but gain some extra defense. So I lost two items there, but as you'll see in this fight right now, I have 20 stacks of extra defense. And every hit that I tank has that extra defense applied to it. We got our first spider cocoon. We're going to populate this area with a lot of enemies. I think for now I'm just going to go with the higher temporary HP stat. And then for the weapons, we're just going to go for the raw damage for now. On the boots, we have some counter percentage or higher evasion. Neither of those are really fantastic, but I think I'll just take the higher evasion. And now we continue on our loop and hope for some better drops here. So we did get a second village in Smith's Forge, and what I think I'll do is I'm going to set up another defense checkpoint right here. Because so we're going to populate this area with a ton of enemies. So this will heal us and provide us with some extra defense. And the reason I place the forge next to a village is that if this were any other tile other than a village, this would occasionally spawn a very dangerous iron golem enemy. So having it placed on the village like that gives you the defense bonus, but prevents the iron golem from ever spawning. I really cannot believe that we have not drawn any more vill or any more uh, rivers. It's pretty wild. What we really need is a bookery at this point. There is finally another river. The bookery card allows you to cycle through your cards much quicker. It replaces three of your current hand cards with three random cards. 
as you can see now that we have the defense buff from the armory or from the, the smith's forge rather um, we are getting that extra defense and the fight is much less scary this beacon card provides a 20% attack speed buff for all units inside of its influence though it does not affect the boss enemy so I'm going to have it just barely touching the campfire tile uh, and because that is the tile that the boss will eventually spawn on once we summon him by filling this meter now we have some more items to look at here we really aren't getting too lucky with our items I would potentially take this if it had attack speed um, but really the damage difference is so minuscule I think I'll just take it on my second slot for the extra substats even if they're not substats I'm building for mm, again really none of these items are anything that I want to use at this point if we had the picky perk our items that we get every loop would be much much more powerful so we can hope for the picky perk next time around um, this is the bookery that I was talking about I think I'll place this right here and this will allow me to swap my cards so as you can see there I got three new random cards This battlefield spawns a chest randomly every day. Um, and if you place two battlefields across from one another, it will actually create a blood path, which spawns dangerous enemies as well. But as you can see, we're really not doing too exceptionally well on this run which is unfortunate but we are surviving and we are dealing with these enemies pretty handily and as you can see the uh, bloody grove that I placed here is doing quite a bit of work instantly killing a lot of those enemies uh, for every 10 forests or thickets that you place one of these abandoned villages will appear and they're quite troublesome And we did just level up again, which is great. And we got another bookery, which is nice. I think I'll go ahead and place that right here, perhaps. Just to get some extra card draw. Which we're really lacking in right now. We're not getting the cards that we need. That we need. Um, unfortunately, we did not get the picky perk once again, but we did get Master of Fencing, which gives us a 10% chance of simultaneously attacking two targets, which stacks really well with attack speed, which is what I'm trying to build for right now. Uh, we did get another bookery, which I think I will actually use. And then this battlefield, like I mentioned, um, will when they overlap they create what's called a blood path which spawns blood clot enemies and these sand dunes I'll continue placing along there my plan is to have the river go all the way around and then across uh, we did get another river which is nice and then another thicket which is nice We're almost out of our defense stack, so I think we timed that pretty well. Not really an item that we want to use. And then as you can see, this formerly abandoned village is a count's land. I don't know if I didn't mention that before, but it gives much more healing than a normal village would. And it also gives better quest rewards.
Now in this case, the quest, the quest reward isn't that fantastic. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and take these boots at this point, just for those substats. We did get at least one damage upgrade here. Um, we're really not getting very lucky on our items, which is quite unfortunate. Um, but I guess we will go ahead and sacrifice those substats for the additional damage. Our evasion is so low and our counter, our counter is 24%, but we're really not building for counter. The thickets give us a significant amount of attack speed already, so just boosting our damage I think is probably the better choice. Oh, I actually made a mistake. I should have made this a thicket right here. So we're going to actually miss out on the boosting factor of the river right there. Because when it becomes an oasis, it no longer provides the boosting factor. So I should have just made one oasis and made those thickets instead. Continue our card draw. I'm actually going to use this Oblivion. Ideally, you want to save some Oblivions for the boss fight because when he spawns, the area fills in with Lich Palaces. Um, but I think I'm just going to Oblivion. I think actually I'll Oblivion this Sand Dune. and hang on to the boost for all of these. Erase that mistake, and then place that there. So we get our rivers and continue on downward. These enemies are the ones that spawn in those abandoned villages. We really have not been too fortunate with our card draw, which kind of is not ideal. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if I want to... I could actually just place this blood grove here. And it also becomes a Hungry Grove. And we will continue on our way here. I don't want to build another village because that would spawn a bandit camp. Hmm, I think I will actually spawn these spiders though for the additional card draw. Spiders are extremely, extremely good because they drop a lot of cards. And then for the sand dunes, hmm, I think I'll make this an oasis as well, up here. So for that additional fifth percentage, um, the oasises decrease enemies' attack speed by 1% each, and then my attack speed by 0.5% each. So increasing the gap between my attack speed and theirs as I build all of those thickets. Let's hope for some good items. Here we 
go. Let's see what we get. Uh, it appears once again we did not get fantastic items. Really none of these are too enticing. I will use this as a slight upgrade and I will use this as a pretty significant upgrade actually. It gives us attack speed and evasion and it's level 9. This provides 14% attack speed but decreases our damage by quite a bit. I don't think the lost overall damage is worth the 14% attack speed at this point. We really are not getting too lucky on our items. Neither of these stats are really anything that I want to be building up at the current moment. So I think we just pass on all of these items, which is very unfortunate. Again, that is really why you want to get the picky perk. It really is not looking too hopeful. But you never know with this game, we might get a nice random windfall. These uh, enemies, there's always a chance if you're in a battlefield that a dead enemy will become a ghost, and then a ghost can become a ghost of a ghost. And the ghost of a ghost can actually become uh, another enemy after that. I forget what it's called, but... That is one of the dangers of the battlefield. So let's hope for some good cards right here. We did get another river. Um, the spider cocoon, I think I will go ahead and place right here. Uh, here are our sand dunes, I think. Hmm, I think I'll just go ahead and place these off the beaten path. And then build our river upward. Uh, we do get another oasis right there, actually. Continue our river and continue our thickets. As you can see, we're getting much closer to the boss. And I don't feel particularly overpowered at this point, which is unfortunate. Um, this actually I think I will use 100%. It's rare these days that the quest reward items are actually upgrades. But I will definitely take that. Here the... Blood Grove is really carrying us through this area. But as you can see, the attack speed is really starting to stack up with these rivers combined with the thickets. Every thicket is a 4% attack speed if it's next to a river. Oasises give the debuff to the enemy as well. So we're, I think we're doing pretty well on our building out here, but overall, I definitely think we could be doing better with the items. I might actually just pause on my building for the time being. So we're so close to summoning the boss, I would definitely like to level up again. Okay, so here we did actually get some damage upgrades. Both of these are quite better than what we're currently using. So this goes there, this goes there. This gives us a increase in attack speed. It's only level seven. Those substats are quite a bit better. We lose the evasion, but I think if we aim to tank with our necklace, the evasion is less important compared to just doing more overall damage. So that puts us at 103 attack speed. 
And I think I will take this for the higher overshield since we sacrificed our evasion. And now we are looking quite a bit better off in terms of damage and attack speed. So I think that was a very nice windfall of an item drop. So let's see how we fare. Yeah, we're looking pretty, pretty nice. Um, I'm definitely going to level up right here. So hopefully we can get the picky perk. Let's see what happens. Okay, we did not get the picky perk. That is quite unfortunate. We did get Eye of God, which is useful if you're playing on difficulty level 2 or higher. But on level 1, which we're playing on, the enemies already have zero abilities. So this really doesn't do anything for us here. Um, 3 HP after a kill is nice for sustain. And this is nice for farming resources, I think. I'm just going to go for the farming resources, since ideally we're not really losing much HP with our current attack speed build. So we're going to continue on our way here. Um, the best perks for the rogue, in my opinion, are the one that summons the rat wolf companion. And the picky perk, of course, that I've been talking about incessantly. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get either of those on this run. I think we might as well just spawn the boss at this point. Um, I, the only other thing I could think of is leveling up again before summoning the boss, but that's quite a ways away. I think what we do is just summon the boss and see how we fare. So we completed the boss here. As you can see, he did summon one, two, three, four, five Lich's Palaces. Um, hopefully we can get some Oblivion cards to deal with a few of those. I really have not been playing this optimally. Um, I have been playing level 2 mainly um, and kind of forgot about those Lich Palaces if I'm being honest. But each one of these palaces provide a 5% damage and HP buff to the boss, which is quite significant when added up. What I could have done is placed, for example, a spider cocoon right here um, and placed a vampire mansion right here and that would have prevented two of them from spawning at least we were lucky enough to get one oblivion so we can destroy one of these palaces and let's hope for a couple more of those oblivion guards if we're lucky um, I think what I'm going to actually do at this point is place forests and deserts. Just to get as much of a buff as we can for this boss fight. And we did not... We did not receive any new Oblivion cards. Which is unfortunate but we're going to maximize our defense here. So we'll have 30 full stacks if we don't get hit, which it looks like we didn't get hit. So we have 30 stacks of defense. We have our build at 120 attack speed. Let's see if it is good enough. Usually I would say if I had the dog with me, the rat wolf, this might be doable but without him to be a meat shield, I think we might be in a little bit of trouble. Let's just see how we do against this guy with 120 attack speed. So we're actually doing quite good, and as soon as he hits 20% HP, he will be dead. So there you have it. 
that is the level one boss. He will give you different dialogue the first time you face him. Um, but since I've already beaten him a number of times, this is what he says. We just call him a punching bag and continue on our way. The first few times you beat this boss, you will be allowed to pick new level up perks. So every time I leveled up, those were things that I unlocked from defeating this boss and the second boss. Um, but after you beat him three times, you will only be able to choose resources. And I think that I will retreat. So what you could do is click stay and continue to do your loop and farm resources. But for the sake of this video, I think we're going to pull out for now. If you die in this game, you only keep 30% of the resources you gathered. If you, re uh, if you retreat on any tile other than the campfire, you keep 60%. And if you retreat on the campfire, you will keep everything. So that's what I will do. And there you have it. As you can see, it is a very simple and straightforward game, but extremely, extremely fun and addictive, in my opinion. I would 100% recommend, if this game looks interesting to you, that you give it a shot. It's on sale currently on Steam right now, and worth every penny, in my opinion. And I do believe there is actually a demo available, if you would like to test it out before purchasing the game. That is Loop Hero, a really charming and fun game that I've absolutely fallen in love with. Definitely check it out and uh, give it a shot. And until next time, I hope you all have a very pleasant evening. Good night.